I couldn't think of an intro, so this is what you get. This is my angry voice. I hate, hate making dispensers more than anything in this game. Why? Why do we have to do it this way? Why can't there be a simpler way? This is the worst, most painful. Oh, I misclicked. No. Okay. We'll, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. You know, it's one of those moments, guys. Like, when I'm making dispensers, I, I'm thinking to myself, is this it? Am I turning into a cranky person? <laughs> Have I become bitter? Is that what's happening here? But I, I don't think that's what it is. I think everybody hates making dispensers. I don't think it's just me, right? I hope not, anyways. It's like the only recipe in the game where you you have to use a non-stackable item in the crafting recipe. So if you gotta make a stack or two, like I just did, please tell me nobody enjoys that, because <laughs> I certainly don't. And I, I complain about it every time I have to do it. Uh, but yeah, today guys, we're gonna head over to the end. This thing is not as fast as I remember it. I haven't used it in a while. This is our, our ice road to the end. I remember you, you get hungry pretty quick on it. Did they change this where you can't, like, uh... Oh, maybe my timing's just off. It's a little bit faster now. I feel like I used to be able to get through this a lot faster, though. Huh. Okay, we made it. We made it. This is our portal to the end. Let's hop in. We're gonna be building a bee farm today, guys. Finally, it's happening. So I was just gathering some materials for it, uh, off-camera mostly, where... Got like two shulker boxes full of stuff and a bunch of stuff in our redstone box as well. Yeah, so we want to build the bee farm in the end here, but we don't want to build it on the main island probably. Uh, so so that we don't have to worry about the dragon killing it. So we're going to go through one of these portal things. Oh, you can just walk through them. I was curious. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that before. I always use the ender pearl. Okay, yeah, this area over here looks like it should work for the build. I was mostly concerned, like, I don't want to build it over top the void in case I fall while building, you know? <laughs> I like the idea of having the island underneath us as, like, a, a safety net as we make this thing. So, we're going to come out of the portal here. We'll probably have some sort of a room. Like, uh, we'll come out, we'll have a room. In this room, we'll have storage for all the honey we collect from the, the bee farm. So I'm guessing this room's going to be at least 9 or 11 blocks wide. So this is 11 here. Um, and then beyond that is going to be where we actually make the honey. So I just put down a bit of a floor next to this portal thing. We're going to go through and make sure we actually land on this and not on the, the end stone down below when we come through. So we'll go through and then we'll come back. Where did we end up? Pretty, pretty close to where we want to be. Okay. So it put us... Oh, that's interesting. It puts you inside blocks, even. That I didn't expect. Let's try that again. That was interesting. Yeah. Or no, it didn't put me in blocks. I'm just crouching. Right? Yeah. I thought it put me inside that block over there for some reason. Okay, everybody. So check it out. We got our basic layout to the bee farm all set up here. And it doesn't look the best. It's true. It's true. But we're not really going for looks with this bee farm. We're going for uh, efficiency and production which is why we're building it in the end in the first place, because if we build it in the overworld, the bees will sleep during the night, and we want them working 24-7, so if we build it in the end, they never sleep. They'll be busy as bees over here, right? Um, so yeah, with this design, we got the bee farm, the beehive over here, flower right in front, hoppers underneath that. This is supposed to be tilled land, but I gotta set up some water for it to keep it tilled. And then when items land on top of the tilled land here, they go in the hoppers down below here. Um, yeah, so whenever the beehive updates, the observer triggers, flips the trap door, which then goes down to the dispenser, and that will have some empty bottles in to collect the honey, or shears to make the, the honeycomb. But yeah, we got the same basic design copied four times. So it's just mirrored between these two, and then we have another set over here. And now we're gonna like start expanding it out this way. I'm thinking in blocks of like 15. So this is our first first one here, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
All right, so we got 15 over here. Um, so that's going to be 60 beehives because 15 times 4 is 60. We'll probably aim for like 120 with this farm and just take it from there and see how that works. See how much honey we actually produce. Because I don't know like how big this needs to be. Probably should have placed the dispensers first. Now I have to hold shift here. <laughs> Oopsies. All right, so I don't think this should take us very long to build. It's a pretty simple design, just copied many times. So it's just like, how many beehives do we actually want to set up? Um, the big trouble we're going to have is I'm going to run out of iron. <laughs> it takes a lot of hoppers to build this thing. And I don't have a lot of iron left. So we'll see how far we can get with it. Um, and we still have that issue with... Uh, it possibly getting jammed. So I'm just going to run like a bunch of redstone over top the observers here probably to flip the trap door every so often if it gets jammed that'll that'll fix it um and then that should be fine the other thing that's going to take a bunch of time is breeding the bees uh once we get this fully set up it's going to take a while to build up the population so yeah otherwise it's it's an easy thing to do Awesome. Good stuff. So check it out. We got our first section complete here. 60 beehives all set up, ready to roll, ready for the bees. And let's let's put them in there. So I brought over some bee nests with us, with a few bees inside. Now the tricky part with, uh, with these, so we got to make sure like when we place them and break them afterwards that we don't uh, anger all the bees and have them sting us and all die, right? So I'm going to set these up maybe over here. Hopefully the bees will come out. Come out to play. <laughs> um, no, nothing yet. Some of these might be empty. I'm not sure. Hopefully some of them have bees in. Uh-oh. Okay. Whew, we got some at least. Okay, they both popped out here. I'm going to break the nest. Now they're going to get mad at me. Oh, I should have sealed that. That's not good. Okay, I messed up pretty bad there. But as long as you have flowers, they'll follow you around. So I, I managed to get them back inside here. And now we're going to start the bee breeding. Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. First baby bee. This is going to take a long time because each hive can handle three bees. And we have 60. So that's 180 that we need here. Um, The other big thing I just realized, like... For each beehive, we have one dispenser and two hoppers for distributing, like, the glass bottles or the shears. So that means to fill this up with glass bottles, all of these, all 60 of them, is going to take, like, 42, over 42 chests of sand smelted into glass and, and made into bottles. So we're going to need a lot of sand, <laughs> uh, which I wasn't prepared for. Uh, yeah, you know, this is actually going to be way harder to do than I thought, isn't it? Because, like, breeding the bees is going to take a couple hours here, maybe. Um, and then collecting the sand, like, 42 chests of sand, that's going to take a couple hours, too. We might need to break this up a bit. The thing about the bees, like, you can breed them every five minutes, but, like, once they go into their beehive, they don't grow anymore. Or they don't, uh, the countdown doesn't go down anymore as they're in the beehive. And, like, when they're babies, they don't grow when they're in the beehive. And I think they spend only, like, a quarter of their time out of the beehive. So if you can breed them every five minutes, it's, it's actually, like, every 20 minutes then. Um, yeah, unless, like, what I've been doing is I've just been standing here holding a flower so that they don't go back inside. Um, so that reduces the time for these first few bees. But eventually, like, there's going to be so many I can't do that for them. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like really struggling here. I'm trying to decide like what to do. Like I could just go farm that sand. Like it's not a huge deal. But like I think it's really important you build a witch farm in your world before you build a bee farm so that you can get the free bottles from the witches to use with your, your bee farm. Uh, we actually do have a witch farm. It's just really trash. <laughs> So originally we had a, an arrow method, like where we would shoot the witches off of a platform with arrows. That was very gimmicky. 
mostly did it just for fun. Then I tore that out and I replaced it with a water system here, which is not good at all. Um, so I'm going to maybe switch this up with a shifting floor system. Fortunately, in my world, there there are no like dual witch farms or, or quads like some people have. You have to like, you have to pick a special seed to get that pretty much. Like chances of actually finding one of those randomly are extremely low. So probably the first thing we should do is just make sure shifting floors still work in the game. Um, I know there was an issue, I think, at 1.4.1 where mobs wouldn't spawn on soul sand anymore. I think that's that's been fixed now, again. Um, I just want to make sure we can actually fall through. So I'm going to stand on the soul sand here, press the button. And yeah, I think we fell through. Here, actually, let's add uh, some barriers here, just so it's a little bit more clear. Try this again. So it doesn't go, we don't fall through on that. We have to be standing on the soul sand for it to happen. Yeah, and we fell through the ground. Okay, that's good. Um, if a mob spawns on the dirt though, the soul sand will, will go over and then it'll switch back and then they'll fall through. So yeah, it looks like that's still, still fine. Okay, so we're gonna tear out this old wiring here, the hopper clock. Just runs up to a bunch of dispensers with water buckets in. We're gonna get rid of all of that and start fresh here. So to be honest, I don't entirely know how to build one of these, but I'm gonna try my best here and hopefully it'll work. Hopefully I don't miss any crucial detail to the design. Uh, but yeah, I think all we gotta do is like mix in soul sand every second block. And we originally had ice here, so I'm just going to leave it ice for right now while we're building this. Might change it later. Do I got more? Yeah, we do. Okay, good. So we shift this back and forth, like left and right here. So we got to get a bunch of pistons on this side and this side. Uh, that'll do that. I think we can maybe stick in some tripwires at this top layer and detect when witches spawn. But I'm not entirely sure if that'll work. Um, we're going to get our trap doors. Flip them up here and do that all all the way through here. Um, and yeah, so it's a it's a triple layer witch farm, just one single like spawn area though. So the idea is we shift the top the top layer, all the witches on there will fall down to the second layer. Combine with them, then we shift that second layer, they fall down again. We sh shift the third layer, and then we're gonna drop them like twenty some blocks down below where they'll die from the fall damage or get to a one hit kill if we want to kill them ourselves. And that's, I think all that, all we have to do with it, right? I don't want to do a Windows update. <laughs> I think that's what that was. Awesome, so check it out here. We got it set up and functioning. So it goes top, middle, and then bottom. I have a five tick delay between activating the layers. I might need to increase that to six or seven. Because I'm not sure if they'll fall down in time. I think it's pretty close as it is right now. Uh, but yeah, top, middle, bottom. And then it waits a few seconds here for more witches to spawn. And then it triggers again. And they should fall down here. There is no no place for them to fall at the moment. We just have water underneath here, so I have to dig a big hole <laughs> or set up some kind of killing area below. Uh, but this was actually a lot easier to build than I thought. Like the redstone, to this is pretty simple. So we just have lines of redstone here running to the pistons. Um, six sets of pistons, two per layer, right? And the pistons are just be behind the, the ice here and up here and over there. Uh, and then we just activate it all on the back here. We got a hopper clock running. Right now I just have, I think, eight or nine items in here. Um, it goes to a monostable circuit here, both sides. We have a two tick delay between like this left side of pistons activating and then this side. Uh, and then it goes down like a staircase here to each of the layers. But uh, yeah, I guess let's try to get this thing done since it's so close to, to being done. So what we're going to have to do is get rid of all this water. I did not bring any sponges with me, so I'm just going to use dirt. 
And I'll probably leave one layer of dirt uh, here while I'm building so they don't keep falling on my head, like as I dig this. Very good, very good. So we're making some pretty good progress here. It's just about done. I'm noticing when that bottom layer moves, some light is shining in. So we should probably try to stop that. Um, I did uh, move a beacon closer to here with haste too. So I was able to dig out this hole pretty quickly. But it is looking like our spawn rates are horrible <laughs> at the moment. So we got, a, we got a bit of work left to do here. Mostly uh, got to go caving next, I think. Try to finish lighting up the rest of the caves. But we are spawning a couple guys, it looks like. Yeah, so this is the hole we dug. Nothing too fancy. Um, so I just realized, like, the walls weren't right. They were like an 8x8 or something. It's supposed to be a 7x9. So I just, uh, <laughs> I double-checked it. It's like, wait a minute. Um, so I, I got that fixed up now. It's a 7x9 area here. With, uh, this being the center point, I guess. Yeah. So we got a couple options on how we could collect the drops together from this. Uh, we could set up like a hopper minecart running underneath some slabs to, p to pick them all up. Or uh, I think we're just going to use hoppers. It's a lot easier. A lot less hassle. And it's not really that big of an area that I, I don't mind spending this much. Because I found a beacon that was made out of iron as well over here. <laughs> so uh, got about two, two stacks of iron blocks again. I'm pretty happy about that. I don't mind... Uh, Spending it on the hoppers here. Well, we got the witch farm totally set up now. Like, it's totally functional. Look at it. Oh, it's just amazing. No, it's horrible. <laughs> it's really bad. So we got to decorate it still. It looks, it looks nasty. We have a lot of subsystems to set up, like a, a sorting system for the items. Uh, Everything is getting collected into this double chest right now. Um, but we can, like, do stuff in the area and we'll be collecting the drops. And as we improve things, it's going to get better and better. But the big thing, the rates, look at the rates here. This is horrendous. Um, I have, believe it or not, lit up a bunch of the caves in the area, but it's the final few that make the biggest difference. Um, so I got to find those final few caves, light them up, and we should see a big improvement. Although I'm not entirely sure how fast this is supposed to run, like if it's working perfectly. Because I've never made a witch farm before. <laughs> I got nothing to compare it to. Nobody's stuck in here, so that's not the issue. There's something over here. Whoa, Nelly. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Stop spam clicking, you fool. Eat your food. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> oh, what are you doing over here? This is my spot. You get your own spot. Oh, found him. Okay, we got some guys here. We got a few guys. Hoo -ya. Hoo -ya. <laughs> that was a good one. All right, so well, that was pretty fun. We did a whole bunch of caving there. Got uh, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven and a half stacks of iron, a whole bunch of redstone again. Name tags, horse armor, um, and we lit up the area here pretty good. So I guess let's head down and to see if that uh, changed the spawn rates on these witches. Should have. Um, Cause yeah, I lit up a whole bunch of caves, but I'm guessing there's a few more in the area. All right, what kind of rates are we getting? Disappointed so far. Um, well, we got a bit of stuff there. Almost a stack of glass bottles. <laughs> oh, man. 
Like, even when this is running perfectly, it's going to take forever to get that as many glass bottles as I want. And we're getting nothing. Nothing. Oh, come on. I did so much. <laughs> hey, we got one. Yay. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So it's not like a problem with the farm. It's just the spawn area is so low um, that if I don't perfectly light up all the caves, it's it's not going to be great. And I got a bit more to do, but I'm kind of caved out now. But uh, anyways, guys, you know uh, you know what it means when I say but anyways, right? So that means it's time to wrap up the episode for today with the comment of the day as we as we always do. So I picked out this one. Kind of like it. It says, Etho, as your fan base grows up, or ages, I, I think he means, we realize that being an adult is very scary. Very scary. Do you have any advice for your fan base as we enter maturity? Keep up the good work. Okay. Little disclaimer first off here. This advice might not improve your life. Might make it worse. <laughs> no guarantees. Uh, but my general general life advice. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's go financial first off. Um, so I would say budget your money. I think a general rule is you don't want to spend more than a third of your income. I think it is on housing every month. So if you're renting or if you have a mortgage or whatever, let's say you're making three thousand dollars a month, you probably don't want to be spending more than a thousand of that on your housing, on your rent, your mortgage, whatever. Uh, it's generally a good idea to always be investing at least 5 to 10% of your income per month as well. In case you have a problem, something comes up that you don't expect, you want to have a little bit of a, a nest egg to go off of, you know? Don't don't live paycheck to paycheck. It's very dangerous. Because um, as soon as you run out of money, you gotta, you gotta go credit. And then you fall into debt, which comes to the next... Big Etho advice, don't go into debt if you can avoid it. Um, maybe with a, your housing it's fine, like getting a mortgage. I would say it's better to get a mortgage than to rent. Um, but, like, be careful about, like, um, going into debt, buying a vehicle or something like that. I think that's a mistake. Like, buy a junker vehicle. Don't go into debt getting something nice. In my opinion, <laughs> I think you're setting yourself for a lot of stress and trouble down the road uh, if you do that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Let's go for maybe lifestyle like health. Let's go learn how to cook. Yes, that's a good one. Um, maybe try to only eat out once or twice a week. Beyond that, I think you're you're gonna have a little bit of trouble maybe with your with your health and your weight and stuff. And uh, maybe we'll just do one more here. So let's go for psychological advice. Oh, 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 here we go. Okay, so a lot of people, they have problems they want to solve in their life, right? Maybe, maybe you want to find a job. Maybe you want to find a spouse or whatever. Maybe, maybe you want to lose weight. How do you lose weight? You set the goal to lose weight, right? No. No, no, no. If you have a problem in your life, the only way to solve it is with an action. Setting a goal does not solve your problem. That's very important to keep in mind. You can have the goal to lose weight, but that's not actually how you you do it. You have to you have to have an action, guys. You have to work out. <laughs> you have to avoid eating garbage food. Um and you can't go like, "Hey, tomorrow I'm going to eat better. Tomorrow I'm going to go to the gym and work out." Actions only exist in the present is the other important thing to keep in mind. So if you want to lose weight, the only time to do it is now, right now. You can't do it tomorrow. You can only do it right now. That's the only thing you can control. Keep that in mind. Likewise, if you're trying to find a job or whatever, that's you got to do it right now. That's the only time you can. But setting a goal to find a job isn't going to do it. Nope, you got to you got to start looking right now. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.